Oh, hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord our God, the King of Zion. Ah, the root of David, the one who reigns forever and ever. We bless his holy name, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Kingsman Redeemer, the one who turned things around for us one who blotted out the handwriting of all the nurses uh, that we are against us. He took them out of the way, knelt them on the cross and triumphed over them in it. Uh, the one who removed curses from our head that today we carry blessing instead of curses. Today we are carriers of the blessing of Abraham. We are partakers of, of the blessing of Abraham. Uh, we are part and parcel of the covenant of, of God with Abraham. Uh, and of course, we are part and parcel of, of the household of God. Hey, yeah, the Bible says that we, we are once are alienated. We, we are once alienated. We, we are once far. We, we are once strangers uh, from the commonwealth of Israel. Uh, but Jesus brought us close, brought us in, oh hallelujah, and engrafted us. We were engrafted in, in, into the vine. Uh, we are no more strangers. Uh, we are part and parcel of, of the vine. Amen. Because we have been engrafted. We've been brought in. And no wonder the scripture says that we are the sheep of his pasture. We are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. <laughs> And that the Lord is the owner of the sheep, of the cattle in thousand hills. He is the owner of the cattle in thousand hills. To him alone be the glory, our strength, our shield and our buckler, our sustainer, our supplier, our help. He is our help. He healed us. Amen. He healed us. Kimorosh Shabaraz. Embredi Galabot. I bless the name of the Lord for every one of you tuning in. May the Lord bless you from the watch party, directly from uh, uh, God's pavilion, and Fed Amechi, and Emilia Najuban, from every platform where you are watching. The Lord bless you marvelously. Uh, we might not see your name here, but we know you are there. Amen. After the service, usually I used to get some mails, people, you know, uh, blessing the name of the Lord, uh, telling us that they've been blessed. May the Lord bless you marvelously in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to tell you one of the reasons why you are here. You are here because you have been predestinated. You are here because you have been predestinated. And predestination is the uh, predetermination of God, the pre-plan of God, the purpose of God uh, before, uh, before time began. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Before time began. And of course, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 4 says he chose us. Chapter 1 and verse number 4. Ephesians 1 and verse number 4 says he chose us before the beginning of the world. Before the foundation of the world, he chose me. Amen. And Revelation chapter 8 and verse number 13, 13 8 says. Revelation 13, 8 says. Uh, he, he, he sacrificed the lamb from the foundation he sacrificed the lamb from the foundation oh that's what makes me bold that a lamb was sacrificed so i don't care what devil wants to do it can't work it can't prosper look that's a blood that is speaking for me that's the blood that is speaking for you uh, the devil might context uh, context your grammar context uh, your uh, your articulations but he will never context with the blood. The blood is the last straw that breaks the back of the devil. Oh, the devil has no answer to the blood. Oh, the blood, heaven accepted the blood. The eight witnessed the blood. The deep knew that the blood was shed. And so there's no way any foreign power will come over you to suppress you on it. Listen to me, beloved. Uh, when the Bible says, ah, he chose us before the foundation, 
by the predeterminant wisdom of God. He chose you before your father met your mother. He chose you. That's exactly what it means. If God doesn't know that we are coming, he's not God. But because he's the omniscient God, he knew that we were coming uh, uh, before my papa said hello to my mom. And the scripture says he, sacrif- he sacrificed a lamb from the foundation. The day he was laying the foundation of the eight, blood was shed. That was a sacrifice that was made. Uh, so please don't tell me about which. Which knew that uh, where I am is far. Where you are is very far. Amen. They can intimidate you, want to intimidate you. But those who do know cannot be intimidated. You can't be intimidated, beloved. If you do know that Christ died for you, oh my goodness, that Christ died for you, and the death of Christ is the sacrifice that redeemed you, that set you free and set you apart. For those he foreknew, them he set apart. You were set apart before you knew it. Glory to God. You just responded when you responded uh, uh, because that, that was the time your eyes opened. But that does not mean that that was the time God began with you. God began with you a long time ago. That's why you are having the prompting. That's why you are having the prompting. There are things, you know, there are places you went, there are places you would have stayed. But you refuse to stay there. The reason is simply because uh, that the hand of God is upon you. The hand of God is mightily upon you. Glory to his name. The purpose of God is powerful. The purpose of God cannot be defeated. The purpose of God cannot die. The purpose of God cannot die. Listen and listen very carefully. The purpose of God cannot die. You better wake up uh, to God's plan for your life. Uh, What if God bless you through a, a prophet? Listen to me. If that word is your word, it cannot go out go down void it cannot go out void it must prosper on whatsoever god sent it it must prosper and so wisdom will demand that you you take that word and begin to war with it how do we war with what pick the word you had from god repeat it recite it research from the scripture if there's any backup if there's backup you know align with it alignment with the spiritual is what gives men age alignment with the plan of god is what gives people age amen if you align with the plan of god for your life you will receive a, a kind of wings oh man man da, 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 you align with the plan of god strength will come on you when you align with the, the plan of god Doors must open for you. Doors must open. Not they may open. They must open for you. Listen, when you align yourself with the plan of God for your life, definitely uh, uh, you will do things that ordinarily you wouldn't be able to do. By human strength, you wouldn't be able to do. Because of the alignment, as soon as you align yourself with God, supernatural strength will come on you. And Jesus told them in Luke chapter 24, Tarry here until you are endowed from by power from above. Tarry here until you are endowed, until you are filled, until you are empowered uh, from power, uh, I mean by the power from above. Uh, tarry here. Listen to me. God knows how difficult the eight is. The eight is crooked and pervert. Hey, my whole that. But he told me in his scripture that the Lord knows how to make the crooked path straight. He can make the crooked path. He knows how to make the crooked path straight. That's why you should align yourself with purpose. Look, you were born for a purpose. Amen. Maybe your purpose is to bless your family, is to lift your family up. Maybe your purpose is to help your nation. Maybe your purpose is to help, I mean, the organization where you are working or where you are right now or the family where you're coming from or even your village. Many of them will not see light until you show up many of them wouldn't know god until you show up many of them will be worshiping idol and listen what stirs up the jealousy of god is when a man leaves the maker and submits to the maid when a man leaves the creator rather bowing down to creation it stirs up the, the anger of god the jealousy of god 
And that's why God will say, I am a jealous God. I visit iniquity. The reason God uses the word uh, jealous, jealousy is a very delicate word. Very delicate word. You can't see God using I am the word jealous when he's happy. No, 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 no. It's only when something happens and God is telling, listen, I am jealous because I, I don't want you to worship another God. Hallelujah. But bless me in the name of the Lord because the Lord Jesus Christ himself brought us uh, from where we were dead, uh, where we were forgotten, where we were bound. I, I saw something yesterday that made me uh, almost cry. I saw people, you know, uh, with chains, like slaves. Slaves. Chains. I I'm not talking of maybe something that happened in the 70s. I'm, I'm talking of what happened in, tw in 2020. People discovered where people were in. Uh, I mean, on change uh, because of religion. Yes, and there was a particular man there who was a professor that was captured and kept there with chain on his feet. Another one is, I mean, sound people, you can hear them speaking sound English. Somebody said, I just came from London to visit my people. Suddenly I was captured here and they kept me here and they were asking me, why should I go to school? My goodness, this world is crooked and pervert. But God knows how to strengthen the crooked part. He knows how to strengthen the crooked part. Amen. That's why you need to listen. And listen very carefully to discover the purpose of God for your life. When you discover purpose, life will begin. In fact, you start living from the very day you discover purpose. One of your greatest assignments is to discover purpose. It doesn't really matter oh, what everybody is doing. If God takes you your own, is this begin to do it. Amen. Now Mary told them, uh, listen, whatever he tells you, do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Uh, that's how to discover purpose and thrive in it. Whatever you were instructed by the, by the Holy Ghost to do, you do it. Praise God. Amen. And last week we discovered that, uh, that time is a womb. Time is a womb. God uses time. Everything is in time. Amen. Everything is in time. God is not in time. God is not in eternity. Eternity is in God. Hey, Magabadash. God is not in eternity. Eternity is God. As a matter of fact, when we say heaven, uh, heaven is Christ. My goodness. I, I pray that God will give you understanding. There's no heaven anywhere you will find uh, without Christ. Heaven is Christ. As soon as you get Christ, you've got in heaven. And so we don't pray uh, so that we make heaven at last. What are you talking about? You don't become the citizen of your country at last. Once you are born, you become a citizen automatically. So you don't become the citizen when you become 55. No, 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 no. You are an automatic citizen. So, so oh, I wish you heaven at last. And that is a statement of ignorance. I wish you heaven at last. Don't wish me heaven at last. I'm a citizen of heaven for God's sake. For me, heaven means Christ. My goodness. Glory to God. Amen. And so time is a womb that delivers according to the plan of God. You know, Genesis 18 verse 10, God told Abraham, I will return here. You know, uh, the angels that spoke to Abraham said, I will return here. I will return here according to the time of life. I will return. Uh, and by the time I return, your wife, Sarah, will take in uh, and will bring forth a male child, very specific. It has been programmed. It has been automated in Canada. And there's nothing that can change it. Environment cannot change it. A devil cannot change it. Listen, environmental powers might fight you, but they can't defeat you if you do know your God. Oh, yes. Mm, locations. Uh, locational authorities, you know, elements uh, might rise up. But excuse me, they are nothing to a person who do know where he's coming from. Mm, uh, where he's operating from. Hallelujah. Amen. He told Abraham, according to the time of life, time is a womb. I will return back here. What you cried for, what you prayed for, what you drive fast for, I will make sure you have it according to the time of life because it, have, it has been programmed into time. It has been programmed into time. And I told you several times that time is not clock. Time is day. 
time is weak time is month time is year you can't get time outside these four elements time is day time is week time is month time is year whatsoever is programmed into the day into the month into the the, the week into the month and into the year and he told abraham according to the time of life i will be back here and you will see that nature will be subdued amen nature will be suppressed nature will be suspended and sarah will take it even though sarah was around 90 years but sarah will take it glory to god amen i want to announce to you that whatsoever you you are believing god for and and it is confirmed that that's the perfect will of god for you it will happen beloved it, it will happen my goodness I, I, yes tonight I, I was so blessed when I was having a fellowship with the Holy Ghost he began to open my eyes to understand that the strength of a man is like the strength of a son my goodness <laughs> the strength of a man is like the strength of a son you know when the sun rises in the morning no wonder the scripture says in Psalm 110 I think verse 3 yes verse 3 the Bible said the womb of the morning you know early morning when you wake up especially when the sun rises you see the beaming you see the illumination and it will be getting stronger and stronger better and better brighter and brighter and no wonder the bible says the part of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day and then joseph said i had a dream and i saw the moon and i saw the sun and the father said excuse me what are you talking son what are you talking i you saw the sun sun means me the man and the moon means my wife uh, your mom uh, hey yeah the, in other words the, the list of a woman should be as strong as the brightness of a moon the glow ah, yeah, the gas. my eyes got open yesterday I was uh, driving out this morning and I said, excuse me, son. I looked at the sun and I saw how powerful the sun can be. Uh, the, the, the illumination, the influence. As soon as the sun rises, it will spread everywhere. In all that world, your, your, sphere of, your sphere of influence should travel to continents. The sun cannot rise and be shining on one person alone. It touches everywhere. Oh God. And Joseph said, I saw sun, I saw moon, and I saw stars. Hey, the least a child of God can be is a star. That's the least. The least you can ever be. When you discover the purpose of God, the, the reason why you are here on earth, may God open your eyes of understanding. You are not just married to that family because you grew up and you want to marry. No, no. You married for a reason. You married for a reason. I told you last week that if God wants to raise a president from a poor family, a president from a poor family, very wretched family, uh, the president we imagine the next 75 years, God can start now. And before you know what is happening, one young man will look at a young girl from a very, you know, from just anywhere and say, hello, hello, how are you? Oh, that's prophecy about to, to be fulfilled. That's prophecy about to be fulfilled. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, da, da, da. Because God can start what he wants to do in 200 years. He can start it now. Uh, last week I, I was I, I was showing us in Genesis chapter 15 and verse number 13 when God spoke to Abraham he said ah, your children will go to a nation and the nation will treat them very badly but I will deliver them I, I will take them out and they will come out pros uh, with, uh, with prosperity they will come out successfully a amen they will come out uh, and listen it was like that uh, and then Isaac was born nothing happened uh, Jacob was born and Jacob was very old very very old before the prophecy fulfilled about 200 years after jesus is lord listen to me uh, you are where you are because god is getting you ready to use you and use your offspring be very careful take care of yourself whether you're you're married or no because the 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 offspring that will come from your loins or from your womb might be a vessel a character that will change nations and take environments hey 
Isaiah 45 and verse number 2. Uh, uh, God said, uh, the Lord spoke to uh, Cyrus. He told Cyrus, you don't know me, but I chose you. Hey, come on up. You don't know me. Some of you are just hearing me because probably uh, you're a Christian. You are born again. Very good. But excuse me, you've been chosen for something. He told Cyrus, you don't know me, Cyrus, but I chose you. Oh, that is called the predeterminant wisdom of God. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 23. Uh, by the predeterminant wisdom of God. That wisdom is far from the, from the wisdom of men. Far from the knowledge of men. And no wonder the Bible says uh, his wisdom is deep. His knowledge is past finding. My goodness. Such wisdom. Say, you don't know me, Cyrus, but I chose you. I chose you in order to use you to transform things and transform nations. Amen. And I'm holding your right hand. I will take you in. Amen. I will make you acceptable. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the Bible says, according to the fullness of time, Jesus manifested. According to the fullness of time. Jesus manifest. You will manifest. Somebody say with your mouth wherever you are, I will manifest. You will manifest. Amen. Time is a womb. Can somebody say in the name of Jesus? Every good thing that is deposited in the womb of time. I, 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 I declare with my mouth. I receive mine. I stay it up. I stay it up. I stay it up. The womb of time. I stay it up. Deliver for me what my father, God, gave to me. Womb of time. Deliver for me whatsoever that was made available for me. Everything good was made available for me by my father through Jesus Christ. Therefore, I stay. I trigger the womb of time. I trigger, say boldly, I trigger the womb of time. Deliver my things. Deliver for me what my father gave me. I know my father gave me things. Deposited in the womb of time. Therefore, I stay up. I trigger. I stay up. I trigger. I stay up. As I say it, so it is. I stay up. I trigger the womb of time. Deliver from July. Begin to deliver. August, September, October, November. Deliver. Deliver. Deliver for me. Every good thing. Every good thing. Every deposit that was made for me. Deliver. Womb of the morning. Deliver. Every morning. For it is written. Daily. He loves us with benefit. Ah, you are in the womb. Be delivered. Say amen. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now listen to this. Be very careful when you feel you are are delayed. Because delay can be a mystery. Mm. Be very careful when you think there's delay around. Because delay can be a mystery. And listen to me. There's no delay in the life of a child of God without favor. There's no delay in the life of a child of God without favor. In fact, what causes what we call delay for a Christian is because of favor God has put on that person. Hey, Because of favor, God... Hey, Luke 18 verse 7 uh, we can read Luke 18 verse 7 Luke 18 verse 7 the Bible says that God can bear long but God bears long with them Luke 18 7. yes 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 Luke 18 verse 7 mm. and shall not God avenge his own elect shall not God take care of his own elect which cry day and night unto him who prays day and night unto him though he bear long with them though he bear long that bear long in another translation is delayed though he bear long but these are his own chosen people his own elect though he can bear long so for delay to come there's favor somewhere you have received favor the 
announcement of favor is is in what we call delay. Whenever you see delay, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, please, can we just look at uh, uh, look at chapter one, Luke chapter one, verse verse six and seven. Luke chapter one, verse six and seven. Six and seven. Yes. And and they were both righteous before God. This the, uh, this are uh, 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 Zacharias and Elizabeth. They were righteous before God. Listen to this very carefully for you to understand the the blessedness of delay. Hey, Dagada. The blessing that is in delay. That's blessing. I thank God for I thank God for delay. Listen, those stop being worried about delay. Begin to thank God for delay. Whenever God favors you, He can be along with you. Hallelujah. Go ahead. And they were not righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And Verse 7. Verse 7. And they had no child. Okay, Ho holy there, uh, beloved. Don't forget, verse 6 says they were blameless. Yes. So it wasn't because of sin. Yes. It wasn't because of fault. It wasn't because of witchcraft. It wasn't because of demon or devil. No, sir. Ah. This is favor. Emma yes. This is favor. Plain. And it is looking as if they say it's a delay. But that's the favor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead. But they had no child. Yes, but they had and they had no child. No, how could that happen? But these are blameless people, righteous and devout. How could it be that they don't have child? They don't have children. It's, 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 it's embarrassing. You need to understand this. You need to understand this. That delay for a child of God is not denial, it's not procrastination, it's not cancellation. Oh, Holy Ghost is talking now. It is not procrastination, it is not cessation, it is not cancellation. It is favor. Whenever God favors you, He will begin to be alone. He bears long with them. Shall not God intervene for those he has chosen, his own elect, even though he bears long with them? Praise God. Amen. But seven says that they don't have they, they didn't have child. Because uh, Elizabeth was barren. Yes. They didn't have child because Elizabeth was barren. A lapora dos kidabat. That barrenness is not spiritual drought. It is not childlessness. That barrenness is favor in disguise. That barrenness is because God has planned many years ago from her father, Aaron, that one of your, your seed will bring forth a prophet that will announce the Savior. God will say it about 300 years before the time. But the seed will keep coming and going. This, it will never die. Amen. That, that word will never die. Amen. It will be fulfilled. Yes. And eventually it was Elizabeth, Elizabeth that was chosen to carry out that prophecy. You are chosen. Take care of your life. Take care of your children. Take care of your wife, your husband. Take care of your family. You are chosen. Aaron must produce somebody. Because Aaron was a priest. He must produce somebody who is going to announce the coming of the Savior. Oh, and the Bible says, among men born of a woman, no prophet is greater than John. And God chose Elizabeth to be the, the container that we carry John and bring John forth. And the Bible says she was barren. It wasn't barrenness. It wasn't procrastination. Uh, it, it wasn't childlessness. No, it wasn't. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is helping me here. It wasn't childlessness. It was an automated pace, a, a default set by God. 
the Bible says they were, they were sinless. They were blameless. They were righteous. Praise God. And that's why I told you that time is a womb. Time is a womb. If you can hold on and keep on serving the Lord. Keep on doing your best to be a blessing to humanity. And honor God. The womb of time will, will produce your expectation. And one of the greatest expectations of your life is what God planned before your mother conceived you. That you are going to be a prophet to nations. That you are going to be a preacher. That will declare the gospel of salvation of Jesus Christ. That you are going to be a businessman, a businesswoman, a career person that will shift paradigm and change things. Be a blessing to your family and prepare for the future because somebody powerful is coming from your loins, from your womb, from your blood. Hey, zagadadada. Whenever you see a woman probably that is going through delay you know, in childbearing, don't laugh, don't laugh. It could be that God has favored her. Hey, Jesus is Lord. Yes. To produce a person that will turn probably the nation where she's coming from around. Or a voice that the whole world will hear. Yes. Amen. And it will be manifested in time. It will be manifested in time because time is a big wound that we deliver. That's why I believe that 2020 is going to be a beautiful year for us. No matter the plan of the devil, 2020 will end up well. 2020 will end up powerfully well. We will not die, we will live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. We will not live in drought. We will not live in penury. And we will not live beggarly in the name of Jesus. For as Christ is, so are we in this world. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. So understand the mystery, the mystery of the mystery of delay. Understand the mystery of delay. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse number nine. Quickly. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse number nine. Amen. Maro Shegerida. Amen. Second Corinthians mm. chapter 3 and verse 9. Yes. For if the ministration of condemnation will be glory, mm. much more mm. that the ministration of righteousness mm. exceed in glory. Uh, now, now listen to me. <laughs> if, if there was a delay and the delay was so painful, by the time God comes to visit you, the glory will be overwhelming. The glory will be amazing. The honor. Listen, you don't have to throw in the towel right now. Wait until God finishes. Uh, don't, don't mishandle delay. Don't mishandle delay. I, I was telling us the other time uh, when I, I was in somewhere in, in Lagos in, in a friend's house. You know, the boy that was, you know, taking care of the house was so bad to me. Was so, so bad. The caretaker of the house was so, so bad to me. Uh, and it was as if the devil was telling me that uh, you are not going to see tomorrow. You were not, you are, you are stopped here. I will look at the devil and I will laugh. And I will tell the devil, I, I will show you paper. And I'm showing you the devil paper right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Some delay is not slackness. It is an automated pace. Let me explain it, this. Delay, some delay, not all. Because there's some delays that can come, you know, from the hand of the wicked. Yes, we know that. We will talk about that in the next few minutes. But there's some delay when it is coming from God. The Bible calls it God very long. You know, God being patient with his people. Amen. God prolonging what should have happened today to tomorrow. God walking with your expectation, giving time, that's exactly the explanation, giving timing to what would happen. Amen. Giving timing to what God wants to do. Amen. And the timing of God means it has been automated. You know, autopilot. The way autopilot is, that's exactly. So you'll be walking with that pace and people might think it's delayed. You are moving with the pace of God, not the clock. I told you that time is not clock. 
Time is day, time is week, time is month, time is year. Amen. And so, when God automates his, his will, uh, there's nothing anybody can do but to work according to the pace of God. It is automated pace. Automated pace. Because John must be born. Isaac must be born. Samuel must be born. That child must be delivered. The will of God cannot die. Praise God. Amen and amen. It's an automated pace. Glory to God. Uh, God very long with a man is favor. God very long with a man is what? It's simply favor. It is favor. Amen. Absolutely favor. Glory to the name of the Lord. Now, in life, there's a place, you know, they call when you are driving, there's a place they call the blind spot. There's also a blind spot in life. That blind spot, you are not seeing what is coming, but you believe. Amen. That blind spot, you are not seeing what is happening, but you believe. And yes, very sensitive time, of course. Very, very sensitive time. You, you don't know what is coming, but you believe that it is well with you. It is absolutely well with you. So how do you handle the blind spot of life? Don't do what you feel like doing. Do what you should do. So I, I'll repeat this one. In the blind spot of life, you don't do what you feel like do, not doing. You do what you should do. Because if you do what you feel like doing, you might make a mistake and then you will subjugate others. In a blind spot, if you are driving, if you don't see, be very conscious and make sure you stay on your lane. Amen. Uh, let me show you something in the scripture. A -a Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 11 and verse number 39. John chapter 11 and verse number 39. Uh, uh, the Bible says, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, we're going to read, please. 11 39. The Bible John says, 11, 39. Amen. John 11 and verse 39. It reads, Jesus said, Take Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he seeketh, for he had been dead four days. Hey, yeah. Uh, look at that. You see the blind spot? That, that was the blind spot. Mm. That was the blind spot. He wasn't seeing what God has done. That last is not dead. Uh, 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 so, uh, Martha uh, was saying, since four days ago, he, 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 he was dead and he's now decayed. That was a blind spot. He didn't see it. And so, in blind spot, you don't feel what, you don't do what you feel like. You do what you should do. But the, the instruction of Jesus was, go and take away the stone. What, what am I taking away the stone from somebody who is already decaying? And they already smelling. That was what it is. A blind spot. Hey, Bararo Shagadas. Hey, may God give us wisdom. Give you wisdom to handle the blind spot. In the blind spot, when you're supposed to rise up and pray, rise up and pray. Yes. In the blind spot, when you're supposed to rise up and sing, rise up and sing. Oh, maybe what the Holy Ghost is telling you: just wake up and dance, sing and dance. Speak in tongue and go. Just wake up. Speak in tongue and go. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Amen. You wake up. Do. Go and roll away the stone. That was not what she, she felt like doing. But that was what was necessary at that moment. We don't do what we feel like when you are in the blind spot of life. You do what you should in order for you not to prolong or destroy what God wants to do or tamper negatively what God wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. That even though you are not comfortable, yes. you are saying, Lord, your will be done in my life. That's the greatest prayer you can pray. Lord, let your will be done in, in my life. Jesus told Martha, go and roll away the stone. Take the stone out of the sepulcher. Take the stone out of the, the, the tomb. Remove the stone. The stone was lying on the body. And the mortal body needs to be quickened. And the Bible says the spirit that made Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. The, the same spirit will quicken your mortal body. Ah, the spirit, Jesus was the spirit. He wanted to quicken the mortal body. 
event there was a stone that was lying on the body of, of, of Lazarus and so Martha who was seen from the physical from the natural was saying oh Lord you delayed you delayed you should have come earlier as me you came the day we announced we told you that this guy was dead was sick he, uh, he shouldn't have died yes but now he, he's dead and uh, the stone is on him and jesus said remove the stone so you do what is necessary what is expected I and mean, what what you should do not what you feel like doing you feeling sometimes can cheat feeling can cheat uh, you remember uh, when when Sarah felt like oh she was buried, Sarah felt she like she was buried, but spiritually, spiritually she wasn't buried at all. Yes, and then she began to you know encourage Abraham go and, and take Hagar, go and take Hagar. That was a feeling. But what the Lord was saying is that according to the time of life, this Sarah that is saying like this, we bring forth her child. When she had it in the kitchen, she began to laugh. That was feeling. And so when you are in the blind spot of life, you don't do what you feel like doing. You do what is necessary. Praise God. Are you there? Number three today, and then I, I round up. Crooked path can be made straight. My God. <laughs> Crooked path can be made straight by the Lord God Almighty himself. Amen. Crooked path can be made straight. And that's exactly what he told Cyrus. In Isaiah 45, I said, Look, uh, you don't know me, but I, I've come to hold your head, and I will make the crooked path straight. Sometimes there, there, there can be career crooked path, biological crooked path. Yes. And I want to show you one. Uh, there's one that happened in Jeremiah 22. Please, can we just read Jeremiah 22, verse 29? Yeah, 22, verse 29. Jeremiah 22 verse 29 I believe the Bible talks about a man Jeremiah 22 verse 29 I, I want us to do that very quickly yes mm. yes yes read it yes hear the word of the Lord yes yes go, go ahead God says the Lord mm. Write ye this man childless, hey. a man that, sh that shall not prosper in his days. Mm. For no man of his seed shall prosper, mm. sitting upon the throne of David, hey. and ruling any war in Judah. Yes, verse 24. Verse 24. Verse 24. Yes. As I live, saith the Lord, yes. thou, thou, thou Conian, the son of Je Je Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand. Yet would I pluck thee this. Now look at that. This was the the pillar of a man called Konia, because Konia was wicked. Konia rose up against the will of God, against the plan of God, against the people of God, against whatsoever David stood for uh, as a, 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 a choosing vessel of God. Konia was against it, and so God got angry and said, Konia is cursed. Yes, yes, and he was coming from the tribe of David. He was coming from the tribe of Judah. Look at that. And so Konia is cursed, and God promised David uh, on the, uh, all the days of the life of Israel, you will never like a man that will sit on the throne. But here, here comes another man that stood against God and is against David completely. And God got angry with his jealousy and cursed him. And verse 24 makes it terrible. He said, As I live, says the Lord, Konia, the son of Joachim. Joachim was the, the son of uh, Joseph. Joseph was the son of Asa. Asa was the son of David. And so that's, that's how the lineage. I, I, I'm, I'm about to handle how God can strengthen, strengthen the crooked path. God can strengthen the crooked path, beloved. So I don't care what your father has done, what your mother has done. 
I don't care where you're coming from. God can strengthen the quicker path. This man was cursed. And you know what? Uh, 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 when, uh, when this man grew up, his son, Shetel, became a king. But also did wickedly. Did according to his father. But his son gave birth to another person. The son gave birth to a man called Zerubbabel. Yes. Zerubbabel. The son of Konia. Zerubbabel. Rose up. Couldn't understand what was happening. Couldn't understand why it is not working for him. Couldn't understand. And he saw what his father did and he said to him, I will never live like my grandfather. I will never live. And listen, the Bible says, cause will be on generations. But those who fear me, who honor me, I will honor them. I will bless them even to a thousand generations. Now, Zerubbabel has risen to do the will of God. God, what would you do because you cursed his father that no child from his womb, from his loins, will sit on the throne? No child from his loins shall prosper. You know what God did? God has to step in to strengthen the crooked path. Amen. Hallelujah. God stepped in to, to, I mean, to strengthen the crooked path. He told the father, even if you are a signet in my, on my finger, even if you are a signet on my finger, Konya, I will remove you and I will throw you away. But you know what God did? As soon as Zerubbabel began to honor him, what God did was to put a signet on his finger. The signet the father lost. The signet the father lost. Zerubbabel restored it. Amen. Zerubbabel received it. And no wonder when he began to build the temple, he was chosen to... Listen, that's why uh, we are talking about the powerful purpose of God. He was chosen to build the temple. When he began to build the temple, the project could not go anywhere. There was struggle everywhere. There was, there, there was hindrances. Uh, there was... Uh, I mean, it was just terrible. He couldn't do anything. Oh, but the Bible says in, in Zechariah chapter 4, Zerubbabel came to understand. And then instead of him praying normal prayer, he began to cry, Grace, Grace, Grace. Hey, Jesus is Lord. And why Zerubbabel was crying, Grace, Grace? Do you know the voice? The voice came up. Who are thou mountain that stood against Zerubbabel? You shall be removed. Ezra 45, verse 2. Who are thou mountain that is stand against Zerubbabel? Though his father was cursed, but no more this child. Ezra 45, verse 2. Ezra 45, verse 2. Thank you, Father. I will go before thee. I will go before you. And make the crooked places straight. I will make the crooked path straight. I will break in pieces. I will break in pieces. The gates of brass. Whatsoever that will stand against you. And cut asunder. I will cut asunder. The bars of iron. The bars of iron. Because of purpose. I've chosen you to build a temple. And the scripture says, Isaiah 4, Zechariah chapter 4. The Bible says, Zechariah chapter 4, uh, the scripture says, and uh, Zechariah began to cry, Grace, 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 grace of God. Yes. From verse 6. Zechariah 4, verse 6. Yes. Then he answered and spake unto me, mm. Say, This is the word of the Lord mm. unto Zerubbabel, mm. saying, not by might, mm. not by power, ah. but by the spirit. No, no, no. Hey, yeah, but, uh, 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 now, 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 God was uh, now uh, talking to Zerubbabel. Though your father was a king, ah, uh, and now you came and you're struggling. It's no more by your might, it's no more by your power, uh, but by my spirit. 
the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of grace. Grace is the spirit. The spirit of the grace of God stepped in. And then verse number seven, ah, the Bible says, who art thou, O great mountain? That mountain was not just a small mountain. It was a great mountain. The person who planted the mountain by, by the virtue of his actions. Be careful with your action. By the virtue of his action, the person that planted uh, the mountain was gone near the father of Shittel, the father of Zerubbabel. Ezegadesh. And so the Spirit of God began to cry out, Who art thou, mountain? Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain. Thou shalt become a plain. I declare that whatsoever mountain that is stand against you from moving forward in your ministry, in your family, in your career, in your gifting, in your talent, in your business, I decree in the name that is above all that name, move forward in the name of Jesus. You are not caused. Christ took away causes. You are free. Whatsoever your father couldn't achieve, achieve it. Nations that your people could not enter, you will enter them. You will carry the gospel. You will enter places. Your voice will be heard. Your impact will be felt. Your influence will be noticed in the name of Jesus Christ. Purpose will speak for you. Purpose will speak for you. Purpose will speak for you. I declare grace. I declare grace. I declare grace. I declare grace. The grace of God. The grace of God. Your merited favor. You demerit it, but receive it after all. You demerit it, but take it after all. That door is bigger than you, but enter the out after all. That ministry is bigger than you, oh, but enter the after all. That job is bigger than you. Take it after all. That contract is too good. Take it after all. In the name of Jesus, every mountain that is standing against you between July and December, let that mountain be dismantled. Let that mountain be disorganized, be removed. Receive your document. Receive your paper. Receive your marriage. Receive your money. Receive your health. That family sickness is no more your portion. I reject it on your behalf. I stand with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you, Lord, because you did what we couldn't do. You've done what we can't do. You did it for us. You made the provision. You supplied your grace, the enabling power. I pray for your sons and your daughters all over, oh God. Wherever a believer is that believes in Moho Kabaras. Uh, wherever a believer is that believes in the power of purpose oh god let the grace of god come let the grace of god speak for him let the grace of god speak for him speak on his behalf in the mighty name of jesus speak on her behalf that struggle in the family that struggle in the workplace that struggle in career that struggle in ministry and that struggle in marriage that she can't marry she can't settle down Oh God, whatsoever it is, grace, grace, grace. Lord, remember, oh God, you chose her, you chose him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For whom you chose, him you will sustain, whom you will bless. Glory to your name, in the name of Jesus, that that church will grow, that that church will succeed, that that church will prosper. That the voice of that man of God shall be heard globally, shall be heard all over the world. In the name of Jesus, thank you for that family. Thank you for that woman standing for the family. Thank you, Lord, for her voice shall be heard. In the name of Jesus, thank you for that man. Thank you, your son, your daughter, your people. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. 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 I declare the blood of Jesus. 
the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus for every home that believes in Christ Jesus every home listening right now I declare the blood of Jesus the blood of the Lamb the blood of triumph the blood of victory the blood of freedom I declare it the blood of liberty the blood of Jesus I declare it right now on behalf of that family on the behalf of that young man that is struggling that is fighting that doesn't know what is happening the blood speaks for you 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 in the name of Jesus for that young woman of God that is doing whatever she can but it seems it's not connected oh God I speak the blood the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus my father my God I pray something is spontaneous something is uh, uh, exceptional uh, something distinctive something special happen oh God in the life of, of this child because that great mountain must be removed because of your grace for we are in the dispensation of grace Holy Ghost speak to every soul all over the world reveal Jesus to people and glorify the name of our Father in Jesus mighty name Amen and this week is our week a week of honor a week of blessing a week of joy our week of health in Jesus mighty name I call for your money I call for your job I call for your document if you're looking for one I, I call for I call for your wife I call for your husband I call for your destiny helper wherever he is a Maralabo Shagadas I call I and I declare favor for you that is having a legal case I, I don't know it just came now a favor for that legal document in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus that, that the judge will favor you by the influence of the Holy Ghost in Jesus mighty name